Morris in the new exclusive Snap Open Pack presents The Telltale Clue. Starring Anthony Ross. And tonight, Peg Hillius and Patricia Smith. With Joseph Sweeney and House Jameson. It's an accident. You're calling the wrong department. Suspicious. Well, hit and run. What street? Fremont and Carver. Pick me up in a squad car. Right. Good evening. I'm Captain Richard Hale of the Criminological Division of the Police Department. You know, every case I've ever been on has been like a deadly game but with a telltale clue which ultimately traps the criminal. Now, last week, the clue was the heel of a woman's shoe. Tonight, the telltale clue will be something we'll see together. In exactly 40 seconds, you and I will try and spot the telltale clue. When nature provides just the right amount of gentle rain and just the right amount of warm sunshine, a vintage crop will grow, like these plump, tender, flavorful vintage grapes. And did you know that there is prized vintage tobacco too? And there is more rare vintage tobacco in Philip Morris, king size and regular, than in other leading cigarettes. That's why Philip Morris, with its rare vintage tobaccos, gives so much hearty flavor. Tasty mildness and fine, full aroma. And remember, only Philip Morris comes in this convenient new Snap Open Pack. Let's move along. Clear the street, please. Come on. Let's clear the street. Up on the sidewalk. Move along, please. Move. Well, there's not much to go on, is there, Captain? No, not at the moment. He died instantly. Evidently, he didn't have much chance. Mm -hmm. Riley. Yes, sir. Where's the lady who saw the accident? Right over here, sir. Oh. Lady. Would you come over here, please? You saw it? Yes. Something I'll never forget as long as I live. Well, how did it happen, Mrs. Uh, Benson? Benson. I was sitting at the window waiting for my husband mm -hmm. when suddenly I saw this poor man walking along the street. Then I saw a car coming down the street. And suddenly the car headed for the sidewalk like it was chasing the poor man. Chasing? That's right. So he ran into the gutter and the car turned and followed him and then... Just go on, please. Then it crashed right into him. Oh, it was awful. The sickening sound of that poor man screaming before he died. Like he knew he was going to die. There was nobody else on the street? No, the street was empty. Mm -hmm. Did you get a look at the driver's face? It was too dark. I never saw his face at all. What kind of a car was it? Would you know? All I know is it was a black sedan. All right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Benson. Give Sergeant Riley your address and phone number, please. We'll need you as a witness. I'll be glad to... Well, Captain, hit and run could be murder. We'll have to go down and break it to his family. Well, that's not an easy job. Never is. Doc, take care of the body. Right. Go bring that stretch over, will you? Hey, Doc! Yeah, Ronnie. Look what I found spilled in the gut over by the tree. Hmm. That's a toolkit of some kind. Yeah, sure splashed all over the place. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. Hounds. 362, yes, Mr. Hounds. We'll have to wait for months. Wait a minute. Somebody over there in the bushes. Flash a light over there. Come out of there. What are you doing here? Police. Police? It's clean, oh. Captain. Huh. Police? I thought you were a burglar. Well, uh, you related to the Connor family? No, I'm the hired man. Oh. I was sitting upstairs in my room over the garage, and I see you coming up the path. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Connor and her daughter are alone tonight, waiting for Mr. Connor to come home. He's awful late, too. Yes, what's going on? Oh, uh, Mrs. Connor. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. Connor. Yes. How do you do, Mrs. Connor? I'm Captain Hale of the police department. Police? Yes, may I come in, please? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. This is Lieutenant Kohler. How do you do? If you need me, I'll be up in my room, Mrs. No, 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 come in, Oscar. Mother, is anything the matter? It's all right, dear. Someone rang the wrong door doorbell. You just go back to bed. Tell me, quickly, Captain, what is it? I have some bad news for you, Mrs. Connor. Is it about my husband? Yes, it is. But what happened? Oh, he was struck by a car. Hit and run car. Hit and run? Is he? Yes, he's dead. <coughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I hate to be the one to have to break this to you. I'm afraid there's more, which almost makes it worse. We believe that he was purposefully run down. No. Oh, no. Who would want to do a thing like that? Well, I hope we'll be able to find that out. Do you know of anyone who no might No one. You, Miss Conlon. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Connor. He was such a fine man. What business was your husband in? Oh, he, he was in the manufacturing business. Friend. Mm -hmm. Were they on good terms? The best. Mr. Nelson is a friend of the family as well as my husband's business is so... He, he's just like a nightmare. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, but one of you will have to come down to the morgue and identify I'll get my things. We'll wait outside for you in the car. Come on, Jim. I'm sorry. So sorry. Who would want Dad killed, Mother? Who? You know very well who. <laughs> Nelson is here, Captain. Oh, show me. Yeah, please. Thank you. Captain Hale. How do you do, Mr. Nelson? How do you do, Captain Hale? Sit down, please. Thank you. Mr. Nelson, you were Frank Connor's business partner. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. You got along pretty well, didn't you? Oh, I was very fond of Frank. Why, well, we've been partners for ten years. Never had a quarrel. <laughs> That's a little unusual, isn't it? Well, if you knew Frank, you'd understand why. He was too... Timid to raise his voice even, let alone quarrel. Yes. Mr. Nelson, you were a friend of the family. Would you say there was any friction there? No, of course not. Martha's one of the most charming women in the world. And that daughter of theirs adored it. Why do you ask? Well, it just seemed to me that Mrs. Connor wasn't as broken up as I thought she would be at the news of his death. Uh, Martha is the sort of person who doesn't believe in showing her feelings. Tell me, he left insurance. Our firm had a policy on his life. Mm -hmm. How much? 50,000. Oh, is that so? Well, thank you, Mr. Nelson, for coming in. Thanks for being so cooperative. Well, it's no trouble at all. Oh, Mr. Mr. Nelson. There's one thing more. Purely a matter of form. Where were you last night? Well... I could tell you if I had to, but I'd just as soon leave the lady's name out of it. Unless, of course, I need an alibi. The only one who needs an alibi, Mr. Nelson, is the murderer. Good night. Good night. Well, Captain, what do you think of him? He's a handsome man. <laughs> yes. Handsome enough for Mrs. Connor to fall for. 
Well, uh, could be they'd inherit the business and the policy together. Hello, Martha. Yes. Mrs. Ben. Yes. I just left your policeman friend. You didn't tell him anything. Of course I didn't tell him anything, and don't you? I won't. He's suspicious enough already. I know. I know. So what'd you find, Dad? Oh, Captain. Well, Riley found this toolkit smashed against a tree. Oh? What sort of tools are they? Jeweler's tools, unquestionably. Uh-huh. Look at this. Uh, what? Oh, what's that one? That is a die used in making a cufflink. How do you know? Because we had it cast. See what it makes? See? Snap open cufflink. Mm. It's nice. <laughs> and a lot of those around? Oh, not many, I'd say. Rather unusual design. But what makes you think that those tools fell out of the killer's car? They might have fallen out when the car hit the curb. You know, the tools were scattered all over the place. Oh. Colder. Yeah? What business were Connor and his partner in? Well, they make fine precision instruments. Hmm. Like jeweler's tools? Like jeweler's tools. Captain just got a call from a mechanic shop. Hmm. Fellow says he fixed a car that was in an accident. Suspicious. They found blood. Come on. Police? Well, I ain't done nothing. Listen, you know there's a law about reporting repairs to a car that's been in an accident, don't you? Yeah, I, I heard about that. All right, then why didn't you? Who says I didn't? Denying it's only going to make it that much more serious, fella. I don't know how you, you found out about that. Your assistant called us. My assistant? That's all for him. You're not going to arrest me, are you? You're not going to arrest me. That all me. depends. What did you do to the car? I didn't do nothing. I just fixed the fender on the outside. I didn't touch what was caught on the, on the inside. What was caught on the inside? Well, it, it looked like some blood and some human hair, some human hair. It, it, that, that's what scared me. I, 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 I didn't want no trouble, trouble with the police. Who brought the car in? Nobody. Nobody? It was outside when I opened up. My, my assistant was here when it was called for. Yes, yes, we know. We talked to him. But you must at least have a record number of that license plate. Oh, no. I don't take license numbers. Oh, don't tell me you do a repair job without taking a license number. You know, I, I, I think I got this one. Mm. I think I got it. I think so. Yeah. But isn't that funny? It was here all the time. Thanks. Come on. I gave it to him. What do you want? Johnny. Johnny. Why do you always have to open up your big mouth? Don't I have enough trouble around here with these accidents? Go on outside. Ooh, Is that the license number? That's the car, Captain. Get your knife and let's scrape that front fender. Right. What's the meaning of this? Captain Hale, what are you doing with my husband's car? Well, Mrs. Seems that your husband was killed by his own car. Yes, now the question is, who was driving it? many kinds of speed. This is speed for fun. And this is speed for convenience. And for cigarette smokers, there's both fun and convenience in the new exclusive Philip Morris Snap Open Pack. Now just watch. Zip the tape, snap it away like that, and it's open. Presto, it closes neat and clean. That keeps moisture in and assures full flavor and aroma. 
and keeps tobacco out of pocket or purse. Yes, delighted smokers everywhere agree that the new Philip Morris Snap Open Pack is the last word for speed. Speed that's fun and speed that's convenient. But most important, smokers are delighted with the cigarette inside the new Snap Open Pack. It's America's vintage cigarette, Philip Morris. The cigarette that contains more rare vintage tobacco than other leading cigarettes. That means that you enjoy the hearty flavor, the tasty mildness and full fine aroma of vintage tobacco in every puff of Philip Morris. According to U.S. government standards, tobacco like this is truly rare, truly mild. And the last time vintage tobacco was available, Philip Morris bought, stored, and patiently aged tremendous quantities. Today, that foresight, plus our modern research, pays off in greater smoking pleasure and comfort. So snap open a pack of Philip Morris. King size or regular, it's America's finest cigarette. And now to continue our search for the telltale clue. Oh, seems Mrs. Connor denies having the car out that night and both the daughter and the handyman back her up. That's right. Now well, let's see what Doc's investigations show. Here, Captain. Hello, Doc. What did you find? Well, we dismantled the car, mm -hmm. like you said, and we found this. Right, what is it? That is a ruby. We found it embedded in a groove in one of the tires. And fits the missing cufflink we made from the die. What do you know? Then all we have to do is to find the rest of the cufflink. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> oh, we've searched haystacks before, Doc. But you know, Captain, there's, there's one baffler in this case. This What's isn't that? the car that killed Connor. What? Well, nothing matches. The blood stains don't match. The paint scrapings don't match. Nothing does. You mean that car didn't kill Frank Connor? Not according to this evidence. Well, it must have injured or killed somebody. Oh, it did. I went through the files on all the blood stains and the hair checks, all for over the past two years. Mm -hmm. And these slides match the specimens of a hit and run that occurred six months ago. Well, do you have the file on it? Yeah, the card's right here. Sir. Arthur Fletcher, age 17, killed coming home from school. Driver never found. Well, we've got to find the family of that Fletcher boy. He was the one that was wearing that ruby. Cufflink, come on, Colin. Well, the apartment's empty, the neighbors haven't seen him. Well, he must have moved. That's all, Captain. Who are you looking for? No. Oh. Well, hello, little girl. Hello. Say, tell me, did you know a boy named Arthur Fletcher? Yes. He was hit and killed in an automobile accident. That's right. But didn't he have a mother or a father? We only had a father. Well, where is his father now, do you know? He doesn't live here anymore. Not for a long time. Maybe more than a hundred years. As long as that, huh? Uh-huh. He died, too. They came and took him away in an, in an ambulance, but it was too late. He was dead already. Dead. That's a big help. Do you understand? All right. There they are now. One in the living room. Good evening, Mrs. Connor. Good evening, Captain. Would you come in? Where's your daughter? In the living room. Oh. Thank you. Good evening, Miss Connor. No. Will you sit down, please, Mrs. Connor? We finished our investigation of your husband's car. We find that not only was Mr. Connor killed by a hit-and-run driver, but he was one himself. I don't know what you mean. Mrs. Connor. 
Six months ago, your husband hid and killed a boy named Arthur Fletcher and didn't stop, did he? No, that's not, not true. Oh, no, it's a little late to keep his name clean now. You've got to tell me the truth if you want me to find his murderer. It is true, isn't it? Isn't it, Miss Connor? Yes. Yes, he did do it. <laughs> I've got to tell Mother he's got to help us. It's the only way. He can't hurt Pop now, not anymore. Please. No one can. Please. So you've both been hiding this dreadful family secret. Well, it wasn't Pop's fault. I mean, it, it wasn't as if he was, was drunk or anything. It was just a, a dreadful accident. It wouldn't have helped anyone if he'd come forward and been sent to prison. It wouldn't have brought the boy back. Why didn't you tell me this when I questioned you? It's all so horrible and sudden. Why don't you say it? You wanted to tell him the next day. I was the one who didn't want Pop Snade and dragged through the mud. You didn't care if it was. Honey, please don't say things like Why that. Why not? It's true you hated him. No, honey, I didn't hate him. I just stopped loving him. But, darling, this happens to people even when they're married. If you were older, you'd understand, baby. Really, you would. Lee, you don't, don't want it to happen. It, it just happened. So, you were going to leave your husband, Mrs. Connor? Yes. I asked him for a divorce so I could marry Ben Nelson. Martha, okay. I came as soon as I could. I told the captain everything. Good. It's much better that way. Well, it seems obvious, Captain, that someone connected with the Fletcher boy is responsible for Frank's murder. So you knew about it, too? Yes, he told me himself. Well, will one of you kindly tell me why a car that was involved in an accident six months ago wasn't repaired until now? He was afraid it would be reported if he did. No. No. <laughs> the question, therefore, is... who stood to gain by Frank Connor's death? Are you saying that Martha and I killed Frank? I wasn't saying anything, Mr. Nelson. You've just offered a possible theory, and it's a pretty good one. Unless you can prove that, I suggest that you get out of here. That may not take as long as... Well, that's a very unusual cufflink, Miss Connor. Oh, yes. I don't think I've ever seen one like it. Yes, they're lovely, aren't they? Yes, where did you get it? She doesn't know. You don't know? That's right, I don't know. Someone sent them to me in the mail. I never did find out who. There's a ruby missing. It was missing when they came. Maybe I can find the missing ruby for him. Good night. I heard what you said to Mrs. Connor. She's a good lady. Maybe she is, as. Tell me something. Where did that girl get those cufflinks? What cufflinks? She got a lot of cufflinks. I mean the one that she's wearing now. Oh, you mean the one with the cabochon ruby? Well, they came in the mail. I was there when she opened it. Thank you, Watson. Good night. Good night. Good The same person who killed your husband. In exactly 35 seconds, Captain Hale will give you the telltale clue which broke tonight's case. Did you know that one out of every three smokers prefers a king-size cigarette? And the finest king-size is Philip Morris, because like the famous regular size, it contains more rare vintage tobacco than other leading cigarettes. Vintage tobacco means hearty flavor, tasty mildness, and fine, full aroma. Remember, only Philip Morris has the new convenient snap-open pack. It opens in a jiffy, closes tight to keep in the flavor of the rare vintage tobaccos. Get Philip Morris today.
All right, Colin. Bring him in. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Oh, why? Uh, why? I thought you were my friend. I was. I was. Oh, I didn't blame you for what your father did to my boy. Didn't they even send you his cufflinks that I made for him myself? You know why? I used to look at you. I used to look at you and think, she's the kind of girl my boy would have married if he had lived. You're the Fletcher boy's father. Yes. Why did you want to kill me? You knew about it. All the time you knew he was a murderer. Oh, I only hung out this afternoon when I was outside the door and I heard you say it. You're as bad as he was. You too, all of you. Oh, Oscar, I know how much you must have suffered, but so have we. Believe me, we all have. It took me all of six months to find him, but I did. I went back to the same spot where he killed my boy. And I looked in the drain, the sewer drain, and I found your husband's card with his name on it. Oh, I could have turned into the police, but they'd have let him go. Instead, I got a job here as your handyman. I could have killed them any minute I wanted to, but I enjoyed watching him come and go, knowing I could snuff out his life any minute I made up my mind to. And it was right. It was right for you to die the same way he killed my boy. <laughs> Take him away, Tony. I'll meet you outside. Be right there. So kind and gentle. Yes, he was. Poor devil. You know, I knew he was a jeweler. As soon as he used the word cabochon in describing the ruby, because only a jeweler would know how to grade a ruby. <laughs> That's funny. Funny, a little girl's fib threw us off. I guess because he moved away, it sort of seemed like he was dead there. Oh. Here's the cabochon ruby, Miss Connor. You'll find that it fits. Good night. Next week, the telltale clue brings you the case of the unsolved puzzle. It's the story of a little crossword puzzle which becomes curiously involved in a murder. I think you'll find it very puzzling. Until then, good night for Philip Morris, America's vintage tobacco, America's finest cigarette. who prefer a filter cigarette, smoke Parliaments. People of good taste just naturally choose Parliaments. They enjoy the distinctive flavor of Parliaments' superb tobaccos. Their smooth, easy draw. The custom-made mouthpiece with the filter recess deep inside, away from your lips and teeth. Yes, you're so smart to smoke Parliaments. <laughs>